Bucks basketball is back. We're coming to you live inside the Golden One Center here in Sacramento, California. It is the California Classic as fans stream into the building. You'll get to see some pretty good brand of basketball right here tonight. We got the Miami Heat against the Los Angeles Lakers tipping us off, followed by the Sacramento Kings and the Golden State Warriors. I'm Kyle Draper, joined by Katie Hunter. And Katie, basketball just ended two weeks ago. We crowned a champ, but I am all ready. It is never too soon to have more basketball out on the court. And after having a break in the, with the COVID pandemic like we did a year ago, it's nice to kind of jump right back into things. And this is important, this summer league, because you have an opportunity um, this year for young players that didn't get a summer league last year, didn't get that chance to kind of showcase themselves, develop, um, prove themselves, to have that opportunity again this year. And it really is important for them to have that and to be able to up their game. So it should be some exciting basketball the next two days. Yeah. And not only an opportunity for these guys to show off for their fans and their current coaches, but also other coaches around the league. They'll be watching tonight's game. Tonight, we got the Miami Heat against the Los Angeles Lakers. Let me run through the starting lineups right quick for the Miami Heat. Javante Smart, Drew Smith, Justin Smith, DJ Stewart Jr., and Omar Yurt Seven. And for the Los Angeles Lakers, Joel Ayayi from Gonzaga, Sean D. Brown, Devontae Kaycock, Austin Reeves, and Justin Robinson. Our officials tonight, Brandon Adair, Simone Jelks, and Andy Nagy. Katie, you mentioned it earlier. We didn't have a summer league last year. We didn't have a California Classic. And so I think for a lot of these players, it's an opportunity not only to show out but also to get some growth here, to work with the coaches, something they didn't do last season. Well, and if you look at these two teams right here in, in the Miami Heat and the Los Angeles Lakers, neither one of, the, of them had a draft pick this year. So these are a lot of players that have played in the G League, had a little bit of an opportunity or have gone undrafted. So this is so important for them to be able to get that opportunity to step out there on the floor and kind of prove their worth as they're trying to inch their way into this league. So, you know, Summer League has always been a great opportunity for the young players missing it last year, I think, impacted the league and kind of the growth for teams to be able to plan for their future. So we'll see how this one kicks off here today. And we have two teams who did not make any selections in the NBA draft. So a lot of these guys undrafted players, a lot of these guys two-way players, a lot of these guys looking for their opportunity. The nightcap later tonight will be the Golden State Warriors and the Sacramento Kings. And for Sacramento, we'll get to see the number nine overall pick Davion Mitchell that's coming up in just a little bit but first it is the Miami Heat and the Los Angeles Lakers and when you look at these two franchises they have been super active so far this offseason we'll talk about that in a minute but Katie two teams two franchises who if you ask them they underachieved this past postseason. Yeah, and I think a lot of it has to do with injuries. If you point directly at the Lakers and what they they did, their early exit, um, not pleased with it, of course. They have high expectations every season, especially with LeBron James kind of running that show there. And then Miami, I mean, this is a team that a year ago in the bubble performed so well. Uh, I think they wanted to be able to have that opportunity to, to repeat that underperformed. But they made some big moves, as you mentioned. And so I think they're both priming themselves for this upcoming season. But for now, it's the young guys as they try and figure out a way. Are they going to fit on one of the, these rosters, whether it's the Heat or the Lakers? Or is it trying to get on somebody else's training camp roster at this point? All right, we are about to tip it off. The California Classic, third annual California Classic. Before these teams move to Las Vegas for the NBA Summer League which is set to begin on Sunday. Jumping it up, Devontae Kaycock for the Lakers. Omer Yurtsevin for the Miami Heat, and the Heat control the ball early on. Well, you know the Heat are obviously a team that likes to play some defense, so let's see what they're able to do on the offensive end right here today as we get this going. Shot clock down to 10 for Miami. On the penetration, Javante Smart, layup too strong, rebound, Yurtsevin, the first bucket of the California Classic. Really nice follow, and what I love and encourage young players to always do is there's so many ways that you can impact a game and kind of prove your worth in the league and kind of inch your way in, and rebounding, as we know, is one of them. Back come the Lakers. Very busy offseason for Los Angeles, the trade for Russell Westbrook. As Kaycock goes in, gets it rejected, back comes Miami. A 
chance for a lot of these young players to show out. Like I mentioned earlier, not necessarily for these teams as we have an offensive foul going the other way, but for the coaches of the other teams as well. I got a question, Katie, because as a player, you want to run the system, but you also want to show out, get into your bag as well. How do you guard against that? You know, the interesting thing about it is if you look at these teams, they haven't been together for very long. They might have three or four practices total coming into this. Um, and so you don't have a lot of experience with each other. So they keep the things kind of simple. But system, but also make sure you're making the proper reads. And I think that really there, Kyle, is the trick. That's the answer to your question. It's showing your basketball IQ to make those reads, make the right plays. Yurtsevin already on the board with the two, makes it a three. Bang, Yurtsevin making an early 5-0 Miami lead. Nothing like a seven-footer hitting threes, right? <laughs> <laughs> the NBA in 2021. You got to be a five-tool player, do a little bit of everything. Miami up by five, Yurtsevin, why not? Got it! If you're going to leave it open twice in a row, you know what I say, pull the trigger. Yurtsevin eight, the Lakers zero. Early in this one, off the turnover, back comes Miami. Foul line jumper. Miami with an early 10-0 lead. That last bucket by Stewart Jr. Reeves, the bucket and the foul. He'll get to the line to complete the three-point play. You know, when you're struggling to get your team going offensively, the best thing to do is really have the opportunity to get inside like this, get into the paint, make them make a read, and sometimes just earn yourself a trip to the free throw. Everyone down, get you on the scoreboard, and you can go from there. Austin Reeves just signed a two-way contract with the Lakers. First team all Big 12 selection at Oklahoma, 23-year-old rookie. Can't get the free throw to go, so it remains 10-2 Miami. Yurtsevin already with eight points early in this one. Ayayi with the defense. Shot clock down to five, four, three ball, good. Miami dialing it up from distance. That's three threes so far for the Miami Heat. And they're doing a really good job of just making the right read, going through their options on offense and taking what that defense is giving them. And you've got to think at some point that the Lakers are going to try to take away that outside shot, those outside looks, and see if they can get them, force them into the lane where they have some help. When you talk about the Miami Heat, you talk about a team that utilizes the three ball. How much of a
Um, do they have that right now? Are they working on it? Are they adding it? Because think about where it's going to be for bigs in five years in the NBA, Kyle. Like how this game is continued to develop and evolve. And, you know, you talk about positionless basketball. Yeah. Um, you just you can't help but scratch your head and be like, my goodness, where is it going to be in five, ten years? Yeah, you talk to coaches around the league. They want players that can not only play multiple positions offensively, but guard multiple positions defensively as well. Mm -hmm. Little foul line jumper rims out. But there's that man again, Sean D. Brown. Three Miami Heat players around him. And what does he do? I'm going to crab dribble this, and I'm going to muscle it up and get myself <laughs> to the free throw line. He's not afraid of contact at all. He's like, all right. Bring the fourth one in. I'm still going to get to the line. You're not going to break me. Sean D. Brown, he'll get to the line for two. That will be his fifth and sixth free throw attempts here in the first half. 22-year-old out of Michigan. Now just two of five from the charity stripe as the Lakers make some wholesale substitutions. Summer League coach Quentin Crawford on the sidelines, getting his opportunity. Lakers assistant coach, played two years with the Arizona Wildcats. Only 30 years old, so he's getting his opportunity as well. And you know, we, we talk and we have talked a lot about players being able to get this opportunity in summer and to kind of showcase themselves and work them, their way into the league. The same goes for coaches, Kyle. I mean, it gives coaches an opportunity. Think a few years back. I mean, it's probably more than that now with, with Becky Hammond and coaching in, in the summer league team in, in Vegas for the Spurs. And it's a great opportunity for head coaches and, and teams to really develop their assistant coaches and their developmental staff as well. That three ball right there makes it a 38-38 game. Under six to go here in the second. Devontae Kaycock makes it a two-point Los Angeles lead. You talked about the Lakers and, and some of the moves they made. I wonder how Lakers Nation feels uh, about the changes. I, I, I got to imagine. Russell Westbrook gets them excited. We'll talk about that coming up after the timeout. They got to be happy. They're Lakers with the two-point lead here at the California Classic. Classic, the Lakers holding the two-point lead over the Miami Heat, 40-38. to 38. Here in the second period, the Lakers getting it done defensively. Coming up with a number of loose balls, transition buckets. You know, and they did a really good job, you know, for those that are just joining the broadcast. Miami jumped out to an 11-point lead early in the first quarter, and they had a lot of things going offensively, stepping back. You got bigs hitting threes, but the Lakers just started to chip away at it, and what they did is they got aggressive going to the rim and challenging that heat defense, and that's what's been the difference in this game. Yeah, eight Miami turnovers leading to 13 Los Angeles points. You mentioned that defense. It'll be nine on the shot clock now for Los Angeles. I was talking about Russell Westbrook as he goes back home to L.A. And the Lakers now have a legit three-headed monster. When you look at it, uh, Westbrook as your third option, and, and he's Mr. Triple-Double. Yeah. I, I think for them, though, health. AD and LeBron. I think that that obviously is, is the ticket right there. I mean, LeBron has felt invincible for so long. And last year, really the first time where injuries really started to creep in and become a major factor. And then AD, you know, that's kind of been something that's plagued him off and on throughout his career. Um, and so, you know, you add Westbrook to that picture. And I'm curious how Westbrook's game changes alongside those two, because he has had to be the guy so much throughout his career. How are we going to see this, this morph with those three? All right, Devontae Kaycock. He'll head to the line for two. The NBA app brings the game to you. Follow your favorite teams. Keep up with the latest news and watch live and on-demand games. Download the NBA app today. Hashtag, that's game. Well, I was listening to NBA radio on Sirius XM earlier today, and one of the things they discussed is in previous years when LeBron goes to the bench, 
So there's a precipitous drop off. Mm -hmm. Now you get a guy like Westbrook. Now you get Carmelo, and I, I know he's up there in age, but he shot better than 40% from three-point range uh, this past season. You get a guy like Kendrick Nunn. And so I, I think they're just looking for firepower yeah. so that when LeBron's not on there, they can still be productive. Yeah, I mean, obviously they're trying to get in a lot of ways. Uh, shot clock violation there by Miami. Good defense by the Lakers. But my question is, uh, what is the three-point shooting going to be like for the Lakers? Because, yeah, Carmelo was great, but he was in Portland. You see a nice little replay here. That pressure that they're putting on defensively, the Lakers kind of getting up, putting that pressure, mm -hmm. that's what got them back into this game and allowed them to be able to take this lead. But the question is, are they going to be able to hold on to it? Because they've got to get something going a little bit more regularly right here on this end. That's nine turnovers now for Miami as a guy front rims a three. The lefty jumper is too short. That was Trace Tinkle. Oh, the big fella running the floor. Micah Potter. When they run, you got to reward them. Absolutely. Get your heads up, guards. Look down the floor. If you got a big down there, give it a whirl. Throw it to him. Gaycock left wide open. Can't get that three to go. The Lakers now four of 12 from three-point range. Oh, nice defense. Watch this. Hold on. Oh, Max McClellan decided to lay it up with the lefty. Hey, he's 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 smart. He looked over that shoulder. He saw two guys coming. Yurts have been being one of them, a seven-footer. He's like, I'm going to make the <laughs> right play right here. And this was the play just to be able to, again, it's, I feel like I'm on repeat here. It's that defense creating offense. You're able to get out in the open floor. You see a big man coming. All right, I'm going to slip up underneath <laughs> here, finish on this side, protect the ball. All right, we got a timeout here at Golden One Center, the Lakers. Holding a four-point lead. We'll be back after the timeout. In one center, the Lakers holding a 44-40 lead over the Miami Heat. The Lakers getting a balanced offensive attack. Sean D. Brown leading the way with seven points. Meanwhile, for the Miami Heat, Yurts have been already nearing a double-double, 14 points, and they just changed it to nine rebounds. There he is with the ball, it's triple team. Leads to another turnover. That's 11 now for Miami. You know, but Yurtsevin had three fouls in the first quarter, and he's been back in in the second quarter for quite some time. And I'm surprised that the Lakers haven't tried to isolate and attack him and challenge him, trying to get that, him to pick up that fourth foul. There it is in the paint. On the reverse. Trace Tinkle, he'll get to the line for two. The Lakers living at the free throw line. This will be 16 and 17 in the first half. Meanwhile, Miami just 0 for 2. That's been the biggest difference. And, you know, we talked about it earlier in the game that Miami was able to kind of get out to that big lead, double-digit lead early because they were hitting threes, they were hitting jumpers, getting in the lane. And the Lakers couldn't get anything going. But it all changed when they went to the free throw line. And that's when they were able to kind of take a breath, slow it down, start getting into action, and really put pressure on that defense and just get to the free throw line. They've been living there. Tinkle makes it a five-point game. Knocked down one of two, 45-40. Here's Yurtsevin taking the body. Good help defense. Back come the Lakers. Austin Reeves decides to pull it back out. Kaycock thought about it, puts it on the deck. A little runner. A runner and a prayer, we call that. <laughs> At the end of the night, it counts as two, right? It does. <laughs> Lakers now up by seven. Reeves thought he had all ball on that one. Keep an eye on Reeves when you see him coming at down as a big and, and digging down and getting his hands on things from behind. On the play previous, yes, that was a foul. He got a little bit too much. He got some arm there, but the play previous, he got, he stripped the ball from Yurtsevin when he was doing a little move along the baseline, caught him off guard. He does a good job of being active on the defensive end and really digging down, helping those bigs. That's the sixth foul for the Lakers this game. 
third team foul of the quarter. As Tinkle heads to the bench. Tinkle five points, four rebounds. He make it a five point game, 47-42. 2.25 left to go here in the second. Kyle Draper, Katie Hunter bringing you to California Classic later tonight. After this one, the Golden State Warriors against the Sacramento Kings. Our first look at Davion Mitchell, the number nine overall pick as Yurtsevin is in double-double territory. 14 points and 10 rebounds for the seven-footer. Already hit a couple of threes, back irons that one. He's got a nice touch though. He's got a nice touch, it's a natural shot for him. Kaycock. Lakers struggling from distance, just four of 13. Nice defense by Reeves. Garrett with the loose ball and the easy layup. Marcus Garrett, the Kansas product. Four-year player at Kansas. Defensive player of the year in 2020. Makes it a three-point game. The Heat come up with the defense and the layoff. Drew Smith. Makes it a one-point game, 47-46. And how about the pressure? As the Lakers and Quentin Crawford takes a timeout, it's a one-point game, 47-46. Give me that. The layup is good. Forty-seven, forty-six. Omer Yurtsevin leading away with 14 points and 10 rebounds. He does have four fouls. As the Lakers called that timeout. 111 left to go here in the second quarter. Good to see fans back in Golden One Center, the California Classic. We didn't have it last season, Katie, because of COVID, no summer league. Think about it, this time last year, the bubble had just sort of ramped up in Orlando. We've already completed the season and crowned another champion. You know, it's crazy. I, I want to say what a, what a difference a year makes. Right. But at the same time, it's like just because we figured out how to kind of survive and manage in the athletic world amidst the, the pandemic, it's clearly not anywhere, you know, close to over at this point. We'll cross our fingers and see what it looks like come October when the regular season starts. But yeah, this has kind of been an, an off season on steroids to, to a certain degree. Right. It's like drafts, summer league, free agency, like it's all a <laughs> simultaneously happening at one time and you're just your head spinning you're right about that two weeks ago the Milwaukee Bucks led by Giannis won the NBA championship we already had the draft free agency summer league begins <laughs> the NBA getting back to a normal schedule as yours been yeah he's whistled for steps that'll be 12 turnovers for Miami yeah, he's played a pretty flawless game, if you think about it, other than having some foul trouble. But offensively, he's shown a lot of different weapons. But I wonder if having a double-double, you know, 14 points in 15 minutes, if maybe the Lakers are starting to key yeah, in and say, hey, yeah. we got to send some more people his way. Yeah, the Lakers making the adjustment. Brown backs it out. Austin Reeves, five on the clock. Yurts have been on the switch out. Reeves goes right by him. Gets his own rebound, nearly throws it away. Joel Ayayi tipped out of bounds. It'll be Lakers ball, last touch by Javante Smart. I really like Reeves' game. Uh, I, my one thing is, and this is what we're going to see uh, through Summer League, is young players at the speed that they're going. It's a, it's, it's 100 miles an hour all the time. And he, he's a high energy player, has a lot of skill. You see right there, and pulling up for the three. But there's also this component as you're getting into the NBA, Kyle, where you have to learn how to kind of slow things down a little bit. But good job right there using the screen, kind of baiting uh, the defensive player into that touch foul right there. But yeah, it's, you know, slowing down your game a little bit. You don't have to go 100 miles an hour all the time. That's going to serve him well as he develops. Played the last couple of years at Oklahoma. It was an all Big 12 selection, averaging better than 18 points per game. Knocked out of the NCAA tournament by his summer league teammate, Joel Iyayi. 
from the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Does he look 6'5 to you? That's with shoes on. That's yeah, with shoes. Yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah. with shoes and and inserts and three and pairs that. of socks and ankle tape. Uh, he plays like he's six five though. I'll yeah, give him yeah. that. He plays hard. Yeah. yeah. He has a smooth game. Smooth game. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Very skilled in a lot of ways. All right, under ten to go here in the second. Marcus Garrett being pressured by Brown. Shot clock. Game clock. At the buzzer, no good. And at the end of the first half, the Lakers with a 49-46 lead. They trailed at one point by 11, but turned up the defense, forcing 12 Miami turnovers, 20 points off those turnovers. The Heat, however, outscored the Lakers in the second, 19 to 17. Stick around, we got the halftime show coming up after the timeout. Classic at Golden One Center in Sacramento coming up after this game later tonight. The Warriors taking on the Sacramento Kings. Right now, Miami coming out with a little pressure. Trailing by three. Well, it's important to see how the Lakers come out offensively to start the second half. Obviously, Miami jumped out to a double-digit lead very early to start this game, but it was the Lakers that were able to chip back into it and get that lead at halftime. We'll see what adjustments both teams have been able to make and what they come out with to start this half. Good defensive possession from Miami on the other end of the floor. It'll be eight seconds on the shot clock. Miami basketball. The Heat shooting close to 56% from the field, but 12 turnovers have led to 20 Los Angeles points. Yurtsevin, shot clock down to four, has to give it up. That's a deep three, bang! Drew Smith. Drew Smith tying it up at 49 with a big time three at the buzzer. Back come the Lakers. Step back, Sean D. Brown, too strong. Here comes Miami. Lakers shooting just 40.5% from the field. Four of 13 from three. Yerksevin catches an oop and lays it in. Nice action with your big man. Nice to see a guard be able to really play that two-man game, look for your big, deliver it right at the rim, right where you need it in the sweet spot. 16 points, 13 rebounds for the seven-footer, Yurtsevin. On the penetration, good hands. It'll be out of bounds, going the other way. What do you see from Yurtsevin right here? Really nice two-man game. I mean, he set the pick. He was a little bit low. He's at the free throw line, so we saw he had to go quickly, go straight to the rim. Nice job by Smart to be able to get it right in the spot, you know, right in front of the rim where he can grab it, but it's still protected. Um, it's a nice little two-man game between those two. Haycock front rims at three. Instead, Justin Robinson says, Bang, bang, bang. He knocks down the triple, and the Lakers back on top by one. That's Robinson's first field goal, six points. As Reeves corrals the rebound, back come the Lakers. Robinson, hesitation. Ayayi, three. Yurtsevin, another rebound, number 14. He really has been spectacular just all over the floor, doing a lot of different things, quality things at both ends. Nice job taking that to the basket there for the Heat. They had Drew Smith, a little show and go move, show and tell, looking to complete the three point play. Well, the great thing about kind of Miami's guards is you've seen them not only put pressure up, you've seen Smith do it, pressure full court, but they do a good job at the other end of taking contact and going in, creating it. They haven't gotten to the free throw line enough in this game, just four free throws up to this point. So it's good to see them come out being aggressive, going to the basket, not just defensively full court. Smart front rims of three. Ayayi comes down with the rebound. 
Miami holding a 53-52 lead here in the third quarter. The Miami Heat, they've been busy this offseason as well. A number of free agent signings. Kyle Lowry, most notable in a sign and trade. He signs a three-year, $90 million deal. Also get P.J. Tucker, re-signed Duncan Robinson, Markeith Morris as Ayayi lays it in. What do you think about the Miami and, and the moves they made, getting a veteran like Kyle Lowry? I've been really impressed. I, I love that Kyle, Kyle Lowry fit for them. Uh, the interesting thing is how is he going to transform with them? Everyone knows that they've got quite an extreme kind of um, standard for your physicality, if you will. There's weigh-ins, there's kind of diet plans, those those things. I'm wondering if that's really going to help propel, pro, propel Kyle Lowry there with the Heat, but also Duncan Robinson. You mentioned him. You know, last season when he faced the Kings, he absolutely killed him. He is a shooter, and and I love his story and being uh, the highest paid contract for an undrafted right. player ever, and this applies here to the California Classic and Summer League. I mean, these are guys just like that, undrafted, trying to work their way in, find a spot with a team, and that just shows you, find one one specialty <laughs> find one specialty and you're able to find a fit on a team and you can develop your game from there Duncan Robinson a five-year 90 million dollar deal with the Miami Heat but he's a weapon out on he the is. floor Kate yeah he I mean, really is. you have to hug up on him pay attention to him and like you mentioned we saw him against Sacramento he, he torched the Kings it Defensively, the Kings struggled a little bit defending all season, but uh, you know, Duncan played well against everyone, so that's <laughs> all right. Here we go. Nice little backdoor layup is good. The Lakers and Heat involved in a close one here at the California Classic. Leading the Miami Heat 58 53. Kaycock leading the way with 10 points for the Lakers. For the Miami Heat, Yurtsevin, 16 points, 15 rebounds for the Georgetown product. Seven footer making an imprint on this game. Let's see what head coach Lee Gallon draws up out of the timeout. Another turnover for Miami. That's 14 and running the floor is the big fella. Kaycock throwing it down. And that really has been the story of the game for the Lakers. This is how they've been able to kind of jump out and take control of this game is by their defense, getting out into the open floor. You look across statistically at what they're doing offensively, nothing jumps off the board. They're just getting more opportunities. Nice strong move right there. T.J. Stewart Jr. Ayayi left wide open. Short on that three ball. Back comes Miami, down by five. Into the paint, the kick, the three, got it. Miami using the three ball, that's their sixth three. They started off on fire from three early on, hitting their first three. As Smart knocks down that one, it'll be out of bounds, Los Angeles basketball. And he's showing a little bit uh, different things in his tool bag. You've seen Smart get to the basket. That's his second triple that he's hit. So you're showing that he's kind of displaying a little bit of an all-around game, get his feet set. Doesn't have the most natural release, Kyle. But if you, <laughs> but I mean, that's okay. I mean, that's something that you can work on, um, that you can develop. But if you can knock it down with your feet set, that's a really good start. And it makes you a weapon as you can spot up out there, especially when plays break down. You know, here's the thing about Javante Smart. Played at LSU for three seasons. Led the SEC in three-point percentage at better than 40 from percent from three. Unorthodox. What do you think about shot mechanics? And if a guy can shoot it, do you mess with it? You know, I think that I think that that's always a, a scary thing to do. I, I think of. Do you remember Sean Marion's oh, yeah. release? Oh, yeah. um, even if you go to, to right now, currently on the Kings, just last year, Tyrese Halliburton coming in, that was a knock against him, was kind of his unconventional release. But he ended up being one of the best uh, three-point shooters on the Kings team, as well as in the rookie class. And it's like, I definitely don't think you mess with it in the season. I think that that's something for the offseason. And since this was such a condensed offseason, you don't touch those things. That's something you work on over time. And sometimes, if you're like a Sean Marion and you're that deadly, no, don't change right. it. Roll with it. 
Yurtsevin continuing his hot play. He's at 18 points, 15 rebounds. Nice little spin move. It'll be Miami basketball tied up at 60. Heat looking to go back on top. Smart. Nice find underneath. What a great job by Yurtsevin to be able to run, sneak behind that play, make sure that his point guard sees him, gets the ball to him. He's really been impressive today. 9-0 run for the Miami Heat. Nice back door. Reeves with the layup. I like the flow, the pace we got going now on both ends of the floor. Smart, step back, three ball. See, for me, that's a little bit different. You can get that type of shot at any point during the shot clock, a step back between the legs, three. That's hard for a lot of people at this level. So, you know, that's kind of a desperation shot for me. If you need it, that's in a desperate moment. But move the ball, get some action. James Harden does it? James okay. Harden is it's James <laughs> Harden. Uh, I feel like I need to make that distinction. Right. KD, <laughs> very, Durant, very doesn't clear, <laughs> you know. And even sometimes with stars in the league, it drives me nuts to a certain degree. You know, it's the basketball purist, uh, purist in me. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> All right, check out Smart the bullet pass to Yurtsevin for the righty layup. We're tied. No, oh, he leads 63-62. Couple of guys showing out tonight. Kaycock for the Lakers. And how about Yurtsevin for the Miami Heat? 18 points, Katie, 15 rebounds, a couple of assists. Unstoppable for the seven footer. Yeah, he really truly has been impressive and, and right from the jump for Miami. And there's been several players for the Lakers that have done impressive things, but no one has kind of made the, the difference for their team like Yurtsevin has done for the Heat. Yurtsevin getting a rest, has five personal fouls. Shot clock up to seven. Out of bounds, turnover Los Angeles. Considering the fact that Yurtsevin had three fouls before the first quarter was over, to be able to play significant time during the second and third quarters and only pick up two, I mean, that that's a good, that's a good thing, but you definitely want to get that in check um, as you continue through Summer League. You have to show that, that you cannot be a foul-prone big to really have value. Oh, nice defense there from Los Angeles. Childs with the rejection. Numbers the other way, Queen turns it over. Here comes Garrett, one-on-one -on -one move. Lung will be whistled for the foul. Garrett goes down hard. He'll get to the line for two. You really have to give credit to McClung and the other Lakers guards for how they get back. Queen right there, you see trailing the play. To be able to get out in front and challenge that shot, both of them be there, that's what you want to be able to do. You want to show the motor. You want to show that you're not giving up on plays and especially taking the defensive ones as seriously as the offensive. Marcus Garrett will shoot to Miami. Just two of five from the free throw line. Now two of six. The Lakers 11 of 20 as we got a substitution for Miami. Into the game, Drew Smith, undrafted rookie out of Missouri. You know, I think that's something for young players that are watching elite level basketball and, and trying to, to kind of, that's their dream, they want to get there. Take free throw shooting as seriously as, as you do any other part of your game. That is so valuable and there's been too much of a drop off in my opinion. Yeah, neither team knocking down their freebies tonight. Look at this hard push. Corner three. Rebound Lakers going the other way. Simpson with the hard push. Then gives it away. Got in traffic. Oh, Lung hoping for a tie up. Instead, he'll be whistled for the foul. Great job. Again, another play by McClung to be able to get out in front of a transition opportunity for the Heat and make a difference on the defensive side. Yes, good job trying to challenge that, but absolutely a foul. That was the correct call by the official. Have you ever tried to officiate basketball, Katie? I know you had a lengthy career. Have you ever tried?
Listen, uh, I didn't have the best relationship with officials while I was playing. I was kind of a, a defensive-oriented uh, player and played very physically, if you will. And so just from that experience, I'm like, I know better than to be an official. It's the hardest job yeah. there is. You're never going to be able to make anyone happy all the time. <laughs> a thankless job, uh, no doubt. But you get to watch the best in the world every single night in the NBA go at it. As the Miami Heat with the two-point lead under a minute to go here in the third. But another turnover for Miami. That's 16. You know, I think a lot of the turnovers you see actually from both teams is just the speed that they're playing at, Kyle. And we talked about it a little bit earlier. You're going to see this throughout Summer League, but for young players, when you're in this situation, what's so important is to be able to show that you can change speed, that you can slow down, calm down a little bit, recognize pace of play. Got a loose ball over in the corner in front of the Lakers bench. They're calling a jump ball. Coach Quentin Crawford said, nah, that should go the other <laughs> way. Let's see who they have jumping here. You have to give credit to both these teams, though. They're yeah. fighting hard, both ends. Oh, yeah. They're physical. They're getting after it. Um, and that's what you have to love about Summer League is Everyone is fighting for the same thing. This isn't an unimportant game where you've got 80. This is one of 82, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You have 30 on the game clock. Back up to the Lakers. Here's Queen. Nice little shovel pass. Too hot for Childs. So the shot clock is off. 23.8 on the game clock. Miami will take their time bringing it up past half court tied at 64 the heat shooting 53 percent from the field the lakers just 41.4 here comes the screen oh, swallows that one up two on the clock simpson full court and at the end of three we are tied at 64 a good one to begin the California Classic between the Lakers and the Heat. Miami ending that quarter on an 11-4 run. We got the final 10 minutes next. Angeles backcourt. Carter going right. The kick out. A little high flyer offensive foul. That foul on that play as we take a look at it. AJ Lawson. He picks up the foul. And how about the defense from Trace Tinkle? Great job just stepping in there keeping yourself set, getting yourself squared to the offensive player coming on. I mean, we've seen a couple times this, tonight people trying to draw fouls, haven't been able to, to get to get to the spot, get the offensive foul drawn. And that is an art in a, of itself that you develop over time. Yeah, Trace Tinkle, the coach's son, played for his dad at Oregon State. His dad, Wayne. Trace, the all-time leading scorer in Oregon State history, even ahead of a Guy like Gary Payton, Hall of Famer. Oh, get that shot out of here, says Potter. Second chance opportunity for the Lakers. Tinkle. Shot clock down to six. Simpson, dribble drive, running hook. The tip. And another second chance opportunity for the Lakers. We got a foul on Miami. 
Let's take a look at the defense from the Heat on this possession. Defensively to be able to step in there, get your hands on the ball, and then, oh yeah, have a big man come in to help you a little bit too. And sometimes as a guard, if you can kind of get a, a, an offensive player to kind of have to re-grasp the ball, get your hands on it, fumble it a little bit, that gives you a little extra time for that big to come over, get there in time, and really be able to defend that rim. Nice little pocket pass. Oh, he went for it and was met at the rim by Yurtsevin. Nice defense at the rim for Miami. And then Yurtsevin gives it away. Simpson. We got a personal foul. Simpson will get to the line for two. Xavier Simpson, the Michigan product. Simpson, three rebounds, a couple of assists. This will be his first free throw attempts of the night. The NBA family encourages everyone to take care of their physical and mental health and to know the facts about the COVID-19 vaccines. For more information and to help you and your loved ones find a COVID-19 vaccine near you, go to cdc.gov. Let's do this together. Took a look there at Malik Allen, Miami Heat summer league coach, former Villanova Wildcat, 10-year career in the NBA. They've got quite a, a coaching staff over yeah. there on the Miami bench. You see Karan Butler yep. standing up right now, and obviously he had a stint here in, in Sacramento, loved covering him. Just one of the all-time greats in terms of not only people but players in the league um, has gone on to do so many great things. But, yeah, it's they've got a, a feed of Miami players, past Miami <laughs> right. players going through that coaching yes. staff, which that's a great place to learn. Pat Riley, uh, Eric Spolstra to be involved in that organization. Not a bad idea. Oh, nice defense there by Kaycock. 13 on the clock for Miami. He down by two, 66, 64. Potter, the big fella, putting it on the deck. Gets ripped, but we got a foul on Justin Robinson. Lakers' first team foul here in the fourth period. Potter trying to say he was going uh -huh. up for the shot. <laughs> Can't fault him. Hey. Walk to the line like you're meant to be there. Maybe they'll be like, okay, you know what? I think he was in the shooting motion. <laughs> Referee Brandon Adair, though, he's right there on it. Says side out of bounds. It'll be Miami basketball. 12 on the clock now. Gertz have been calling for it down low. Nice help from Robinson. Forces another Heat turnover. Robinson bumped. Simone Jelks there with the whistle. It'll be a foul on Drew Smith. One more look at this. There was a little bit of uh, a little extracurriculars there and from the theater department yeah. more. It wasn't, you know. <laughs> That's all right. You know what? That's part of the thing. You have to learn to sell things. Yep. Um, but there is a fine line because you know they've got the flopping thing in, in the league. We yeah. saw some some players fall to that, get that fine this last year. Yes. And, and, and the league <laughs> has a point of emphasis too, Katie, uh, going into this season. Uh, they want their officials to uh, take a close look at players flopping or trying to draw fouls with uh, non-basketball moves. Yeah. The yeah. biggest one for me is that three-point kick out yeah. with the leg. Yeah. That's the one that gets me. Four on four on the push. Robinson, tray ball. Yeah. have been another rebound, number 16. The Heat, they've been stuck on 64 for a minute. Smart. The crazy thing is that both these teams have done such a good job offensively at getting into the into the yeah. paint, getting in some inside action, using uh, defense to create offense. The last couple of possessions for both teams, we've seen them taking threes. This Settling, is the point yeah. in the game, seven minutes to go. It's a four-point game. You want to make sure that you're going with what works. Don't start settling for threes or trying to make the big play. Make the smart play. Yeah, Miami 
0 for 4 from the field here in the fourth quarter. Four turnovers. Like I said, they've been stuck on 64 for a while. Here's Robinson on the hard push into the paint. Shot clock down to 10. Childs throws it away. Carter now working on Childs. The lefty scoop too strong. Lakers have numbers if they want it. Queen back to Kaycock. Nice little two-man game running the break. That was a really beautiful play by Queen because the way he shielded that with his body, that's what got him that assist. See it right there. You shield it, get the defender on your back. Nice open lane. We'll be right back in just a moment. Defense Kate. And they've got 14 steals on the day. You see right here, McClung, one of those guards for the Lakers that's really put a lot of pressure on the ball, leading to some offense on the other end of the floor. Then after that, Queen out in the passing lane, gets it out. This is the dunk you like so much, Kyle. Got you out of your chair. And then Reeves, he's going to get this nice dish right here. Two points right there for Kaycock. This is what the Lakers have had success with. I, I want to see them continue to put that pressure on and get out and stop settling for threes late in the game. Yurtsevin, oh, doing his best Moses Malone impersonation, getting his own rebound, putting it back in. And Miami trailing 70 to 66. Our first California Classic game of the evening coming up next. Golden State versus Sacramento. Ooh, hesitation. Okay, Robinson, the hesitation. That worked out perfectly. That was a nice little change of pace. Got the hesitation, got the big man up. Those are the little pieces you got to try and showcase. Third event. Bang! That's his third triple, the seven footer showing the range. Three triples for a seven footer more than anybody else in this game from either team. Just shows you kind of how important he's been. 23 for him for the Heat, and they're looking for him here down the stretch. Yeah, he signed a non guaranteed contract with Miami back in May. Didn't play at all last season with the Heat, but man, he's looking like a player out here tonight. Scramble for the ball. Bodies everywhere, good hustle. Oh, but right to the Miami Heat player, DJ Stewart Jr., the hoop and the harm. And it's about not giving up on the play, and I think that's what the guards for Miami have done a really good job collectively tonight of just whether it's on defense or offense, just sticking with the play. It doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to go through the rim at the end of it, right, Kyle? <laughs> not pretty, but effective. And that was a big bucket as Stewart Jr. heads to the line, looking to complete the three-point play, looking to tie this thing up at 72. Five minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. Stewart knocks it down. Full court pressure there from Javante Smart. Kaycock, shot clock down to 10. Robinson uses the screen. Nice little alley-oop. Childs with the throwdown. Great misdirection right there, being able to read. And a lot of times it's just a look off. Like you're gonna you're gonna go in the opposite direction. He looked like he was gonna go to the right wing. Childs came right down the baseline, wide open. That's a good solid play for the Lakers. Been too strong. Lakers leading by two, 415 left to go here in the fourth. Childs. John D. Brown, Childs calling for it down low. They missed him that time. Instead, Robinson, 17-footer, rims out. Garrett using the screen, foul line jumper. Both teams have gone cold from outside. Lakers shooting 39%, Miami 47%. Quentin Crawford calls a timeout. We got a good one here. Lakers on top by two. Robinson to Childs. Send it down, young fella. Send it down. For a 72 lead. Oh, yeah. 
Golden State Warriors fans are in the building. <laughs> they made the short drive up I-80 to watch their Warriors take on the Sacramento Kings. That'll be the nightcap. Looking forward to that one. Davion Mitchell, the number nine overall pick, making his debut. We'll get to see him. Oh, okay. Gray Reeves with the three. You know, it's crazy. He's impacted the game in such a big way. But when you look at the stat sheet, that put him to 11 points. It feels like he's had a bigger yeah. impact than just 11 points. He's got five boards, two assists. He's just kind of done a little bit of everything. But he has three blocks. Mm. Three blocks. My goodness. Yeah, but right there, knocking down the three, kind of showing a little bit more to his game. Austin Reeves signing a two-way contract with the Lakers. Him and Joel Ayayi. Both guys showing out tonight. Shot clock winding down. Tough. Kaycock the rebound. Lakers holding a five-point lead, nearing the three-minute mark here in the fourth. Robinson, oh, looking for Ayayi, who was in the corner, decided to cut to the basket. A little miscommunication. You know, to a certain degree, this is a, a product of going, A, a little bit too fast, B, anticipating the play, and also just, C, you haven't had a lot of time together to kind of know what, what that player is going to do on the baseline. Are they going to go and cut? Are they going to tend to, to kind of fade out for that three? But, you know, right idea, just wrong execution. It'll be out of bounds, Miami basketball, nine on the shot clock. Yurtsevin, top of the key, three. Nice tip in though, DJ Stewart. 77-74, 2.30 left to go. A little pressure there by Garrett. A near turnovers as we take a look at DJ Stewart working the offensive glass. And you know that Yurtsevin is a guy that's capable of hitting that three. So the rest of you, as soon as you see that ball go up, you've got to crash the boards, be there. That is an opportunity. That's just a hustle play that ended at two points. Here's Reeves looking for a cutter. Sean D. Brown. Saying out of bounds, Lakers basketball, 4.6 left to go on the shot clock. Take a look at Malik Allen. Robinson, catch and shoot. In and out. Back comes Miami. A three will tie it. Garrett using the screen. Corner three, Stewart had a look at it, Katie, just too strong. You know, and that just hasn't been a strong suit all game long for Miami as a whole. Seven of 24 from long range, under 30% as a team. But you know what, you have to take the open shot. Oh, a battle for the ball. Tracking it down, getting the left to go. Drew Smith makes it a one point game. 142 left to go. We're seeing both teams hustling tonight. That, that's what I like to see. That's what I love about kind of summer league basketball because all these guys are out here trying to prove something. They're trying to earn a spot and invite whatever it is. They're all playing like it's the most important game of their <laughs> right. career, you know? Yeah, Ayayi with the turnover. We got a foul on Reeves in the backcourt. That'll be his second, fourth team foul for the Lakers. 122 here to go. Miami 76, Los Angeles 77. The first game of the California Classic coming up next. Golden State versus Sacramento. Ah, oh, oh, it. He really does that two-man game really well and plays with his, his guards, his wings, extremely well off that little dive into the lane. And he doesn't need a lot of space to operate. They're setting it a lot of time around the free throw line. Miami back on top by one. Thanks to a 6-0 run. The Heat bench standing up. Under a minute to play.
Miami taking their time. Here's Garrett. Looking for the screen, instead gives it up. In the paint, turnaround. DJ Stewart is no good, the Lakers. They'll get a timeout, 18 on the shot clock, 31 on the game clock. The California Classic is underway, and we got a good one. The final 31.2 is next. left in this contest between the Lakers and the Miami Heat. How about this two-man game, Katie, we've seen from Smart and Yurtsevin to give Miami the lead? This has really been the bread and butter. Yurtsevin does such a good job of finding his space in the lane, works really well with whether it's Smart, Stewart Jr., uh, Garrett even. They're looking for him. He's got 25 points, 19 rebounds so far in the game, but I think that's kind of something that down the stretch has stagnated their offense a little bit. When the play that they're running for him works out well and they execute it they're getting something out of it but if it breaks down they're a little bit lost and they're settling for pull up so let's see what they're able to do here the last 31 seconds of this game if they can get some flow offensively and hopefully a stop here all right the lakers inbound the ball robinson left open for the three too strong Eaves with the rebound second chance opportunity miami wanted to travel Kaycock to the basket. And Miami can't believe it. Head coach McLeek Allen over there saying, come on, man. One more look. Kaycock. And the important thing here, <laughs> you're down one. What do you need to do? You need to make sure you go strong to the glass and make sure that you're forcing the official to make the call. But, of course, we're going to see a challenge here because this game matters. It's 78 70. There's 17 seconds left. This is a challengeable play. Yeah, we, we got challenges in summer league. Next thing you're going to tell me yeah. is overtime, too. Yep. Is there? No, uh, I don't even want to talk about it right now, I, Kyle. I, I don't want to jinx it. You're right. You're right. <laughs> no, but uh, they're going to take a look at this. Uh, Malik Allen deciding to call for the challenge. They whistled the foul on Yurtsevin. Well, that would be his sixth foul. So obviously, you know, he, he's been in foul trouble all game. Yeah, foul out with 10 fouls oh, with in 10 Summer League. In summer yeah. league. Oh, I say no. let him play, right? Man, I would have thrived <laughs> in Summer League. I would have right. been out there every – oh, that – you know, it's almost not fair. It's almost not fair. Now I'm wishing that the WNBA had had some kind of Summer League because that's where I would have made my bread and butter. 10 fouls? 10 fouls. Oh, that just isn't right. But – Thanks for them. It's, it's a good case yeah. scenario. Yeah. Hey, use them all, right? You know what, though? Like, I, I don't understand that rule necessarily because what benefit is that teaching a player how to learn to stay out of foul trouble? Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. Like, if you're Yurtsevin, you, you're not changing your game at all when you pick up three quick right. fouls. You exactly. Know? You know you have seven Well, left. that explains it. That's why yes. they left him out yep. there in the first quarter with three fouls or yep. two fouls picked up his third. I think they called the foul on the body, I think. On Kaycock going to the hoop. Foul was called on Yurtsevin, his six. As you see, Brandon Adair and Andy Nagy at the scorer's table trying to figure this out. Let's take one more look at this. Mm. See, but they caught it on Yurtsevin. I, I didn't see the contact. Okay, yeah, I, especially from that angle, yeah. it's difficult to see it. Unless it's with the right leg that was going up. If you made contact yeah. with the leg, the knee. I wonder if... Uh, this upcoming NBA season, they'll keep the microphone there with the official, where the official announces the I call. really liked it. I, I really yeah. like that. Challenge unsuccessful. Brandon Adair making the call. Yurts have been trying to explain his case, argue his case. So Kaycock will head to the line for two, a chance to tie it up and take the lead here with under 18 to play. Fans still trickling in. You got Lakers fans. Heard some Heat fans in the building as well. 
A lot of Warriors and Kings fans, as expected. Excited for that game coming up in yeah. an hour, yeah. That should be a good one. Davion Mitchell making his Kings debut. Oh, Kaycock. Free throws have been just the downfall for the Lakers. I mean, they've gotten to the line 23, 24 times, but shooting under 60% as a team, that's very difficult, uh, especially in a tight game like this. You know, that's that's where the free throws come back to get you. We got some Heat fans in the building. Ah, Lakers fans cheering the free throw. We're tied at 78. Here come the Miami Heat. Smart brings it across the timeline, guarded by Robinson. Who do they go to? Yurtsevin. They're trying to give the foul down low. That was way too easy. That was, I mean, they got so lucky that Yurtsevin kind of bobbled that yeah. pass right there. Yeah, look at that. Because that was way, he had him on his back, way too easy. They didn't say, that is 100% the person you know on that scouting report they're going to look for in this situation. Sin had somebody else that way. He had the baseline had he caught that clean. That looked like a uh, five on none uh, <laughs> practice there, you know? Like you're going five on oh, yeah, yeah. five Warm on oh. Right. <laughs> yep, Yertsevin makes it a one point game. 26 points, 19 rebounds. We're the seven footer out of Georgetown. That's big. He was 0 of 2 prior to that. Steps up when the game's on the line, knocks them both down. Reeves, the hard push, the three. Back iron, rebound Miami, and that'll do it. The Heat open up California Classic play with an 80 to 78 win. Yurts have been stealing the show with 27 and 19. How about this look from Reeves here, Katie? A chance to win it. Had a good look at a three. Instead, could not get it to go as the Miami Heat win. Take a look. Reeves has been really fantastic this whole game. That's a deep three, and to be able to do that with pressure, kind of handling the ball between your legs, that is a high-level difficulty shot right there. Couldn't get it to go. The Lakers really played a tremendous game. When they look back at this one, they did everything right. They forced turnovers. They played hard defense. Offensively, they were aggressive, got out in the open court. It's the free throws that hurt them, and that's what they'll be talking about in the locker room. So Miami opens up the California Classic with a two-point win over the Los Angeles Lakers. They held the Lakers to just one point over the final 338. The Heat getting it done defensively. Coming up next. The Miami Heat, they get the win in about an hour. It's the Kings and the Warriors. We'll get to see Davion Mitchell make his Kings debut. For Katie, I'm Kyle. We'll see you in about an hour.